Assalamu alaikum everybody. I hope you all are doing well. Welcome back to another bacteriology video. The organism we are discussing today is related to dairy products, specifically unpasteurized or raw milk. It's none other than brucella. But before getting into the video, I'd like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcome in the comments section. So, have a cup of tea and let's get started. Brucella is a gram-negative cocobacillus. Cocobacillus means this organism is in between the coccus, the spherical form, and the bacillus, the rod form. It looks kind of, uh, let me draw it for you. It looks kind of like this, maybe like an egg shape. I know I didn't draw it perfectly, but you can get the, oh, what happened? But you can get the idea. Kind of like that. It's a small bacterium. It's aerobic. It is not encapsulated, which means that it has got no capsule around it. It is not mortal. The reason is it has got no motility apparatus. And it belongs to brucellosis family. Here in this picture, you can see brucella. It's a coccoid rod. Brucella is not a single bacterium, it's a group of bacteria and the three major human pathogens are Brucella militensis that is found in goats and sheep. The second one is Brucella abortus that is found in cattle. And the third one is Brucella suis that is found in pigs. As in this picture you can see the first one is Brucella abortus and there is the word bovine. This is a group of animals, for example cattle, buffaloes, etc. And the second picture, you can see Brucella suis, and it is found in swine. Swine is another name for pigs. And the last one, Brucella militensis, it is found in goats. From this video onwards, we will be discussing a few gram-negative rods that are related to animal sources and are responsible for causing zoonotic infection. So if an infection is caused from an animal to human, this is termed as zoonotic infection. Same goes for brucella. It causes zoonotic infections because this bacterium comes from an animal source. And the infection caused by brucella is termed as brucellosis. It has got other names. I've mentioned a few here. One is undulant fever, Malta fever, or Mediterranean fever. Brucella is urease, oxidase, and catalase positive. These three are enzymes. Brucella can survive extreme temperatures and pH. It can infect and stay alive inside macrophages. Whose macrophages? Definitely the human's macrophages, right? We'll talk about all the macrophages stuff in detail in the pathogenesis section, so stay tuned for that. But before talking about brucella in detail like its morphology, lab diagnosis, pathogenesis and clinical findings, we need to know the bacterial classification. Bacteria are further classified into spirochetes. Bacteria are classified based on acid fast staining into acid fast bacteria. And there's an exception, that's the mycoplasma bacteria. Bacteria are also classified based on gram staining into gram positive. We are done with all of them. And also into gram negative. Gram negative are further subclassified into cocci. That includes Neisseria, Neisseria gonorrhoeae, and Neisseria meningitidis and also into rods, which are further subdivided into aerobic, like Pseudomonas, anaerobic, like Bacteroides and Fusobacterium, and facultative, which is further subdivided into curved, like Campylobacter, Helicobacter, and Vibrio. Also into straight, which is further subclassified into enteric and related, that includes E. coli, Enterobacter, Serratia, Klebsella, Salmonella, Shigella, and Proteus into respiratory that includes Haemophilus, Bodytella, and Legionella. And lastly, into zoonotic, which includes Brucella, the topic of today's video, Francisella, Pasteurella, and Yersinia. Lecture outline. We are done with the introduction of Brucella. We now know about the bacterial classification. And now we'll be talking about morphology, habitat and transmission, pathogenesis, clinical findings, Lab diagnosis, treatment, prevention, and at the end, as usual, we'll review the lecture. A big thanks to TrueLearn, who are kindly sponsoring today's video. TrueLearn is an online study platform that helps medical students and professionals who are struggling to prepare for school exams or other advanced level tests, for example, USMLE, COMLEX, or NCLEX, etc. TrueLearn, 
being an awesome resource provides realistic, exam-style questions to help you practice effectively. All you have to do is to click the link in the description and sign up. This is a TrueLearn's amazing dashboard, where you can create your own test, give it a name, select its time limit and type of question. Create the test and you're ready to go. Read the question and answer it. If you get it right, that's great. And if not, no worries at all. TrueLearn is here to help. It would explain both the right and wrong answers. You can also track your progress right here in the dashboard. And the best part, TrueLearn has a mobile app that looks like this. Now, if you're interested in accessing TrueLearn, click on the link in the description and use my special discount code MEDSUHRUF at the checkout to get an exclusive discount on their plans. Sign up and enjoy learning. Morphology. Brucella is Coco bacillus. As I mentioned earlier, Coco bacillus is the form in between the coccus, the sphere, and the bacillus, the rod form. It, it means that Brucella is a coccoid rod. It is pink colored. The reason is it's gram negative. Structure Brucella is a small gram negative rod without a capsule. That's why it is termed as non encapsulated. It is not responsible for forming spores like some bacteria do. It is not motile because it has got a no motility apparatus. This is how Brucella looks like under the microscope. It is coccoid rod. Let me zoom in for you. Here you can see clearly, might be there, habitate, hosts. Human beings are its hosts because it causes brucellosis in them. And it's also found in animals because it is responsible for causing zoonotic infections like from animals to humans. Animals include goats, sheep, cattle, and pigs. Transmission. Brucella enters the human body either by ingestion of contaminated animal products like raw or unpasteurized milk. And it may enter through the skin by direct contact in an occupational setting such as an abattoir, which is a slaughterhouse. And it may enter if a person gets in contact with an infected animal. Now we'll talk about the pathogenesis, like how the brucella is responsible for causing brucellosis in human beings. Brucella, after entering in the human body, localizes in the reticular endothelial system, namely the lymph nodes, liver, spleen, and bone marrow. Many brucella are killed by macrophages, but some survive within these cells. These cells mean the macrophages, which are white blood cells, right? Where they are protected from antibody. They live inside the macrophages and they are alive, as I've mentioned in the introduction section. The host response is granulomatous. Granulomatous or granuloma is the aggregation of macrophages that forms in response to chronic inflammation. What I was saying, the host response is granulomatous with lymphocytes and epithelioid giant cells, which can progress to form focal abscesses. You know what? Endotoxin is involved and no exotoxin is produced. Clinical findings. After an incubation period of one to three weeks, wait, are you guys familiar with incubation period? Okay, let me tell you. Incubation period is the time between exposure to a pathogen, like the exposure enters the human body, and the onset of very first symptom of an infectious disease. This period can vary greatly depending on the type of disease and the human being. After this incubation period of tuberculosis, non-specific symptoms such as fever, chills, fatigue, malaise, anorexia, weight loss, or thralgia, that's the joint pain, occur. This onset of symptoms can be acute or gradual, and the fever has the undulating rising and falling pattern, um, which gives the disease its specific name, the undulating fever. And in some patients, in large lymph nodes, hepatosplenomegaly are seen, and also pancytopenia, which is a decrease in all blood cells. And there are certain complications of this disease, like osteomyelitis, arthritis, orchitis, and this disease may affect the fetus, causing sepsis, low birth weight, respiratory difficulties, and hepatosplenomegaly in fetus. Lab diagnosis. For diagnosing any disease, we definitely need certain samples. For brucellosis, we'll need blood, bone marrow, and serum samples. Then we'll go for microscopy, and on gram staining, this bacterium appears to be gram negative. Why? Because the color is pink and it is cocobacillus in shape. 
You now might have memorized the Coco Bacillus word for brucella. It is pink or red color, as I've just said, because it's gram negative. This is how the brucella looks like under the microscope. It has got no motility apparatus like a flagella that will help it to move. That's why we cannot visualize such motility apparatus here. Culture. There are four organisms that do not grow on ordinary media. And these four organisms are brucella, legionella, francisella, and pastorella. The upper picture is for brucella abortus. It has got this grayish white culture. And the lower one is for Brucella suis. It has got kind of white colonies, as you can see there. There are certain other tests that can be used to detect brucellosis. The first one in the list is SAT, the slide agglutination test with Brucella antiserum. And this species can be identified by biochemical tests. And we can also go for ELISA, that's enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. And if the organism, the brucella, is not isolated, analysis of a serum sample from the patient for rise in antibody titer, titer is the concentration, right? True brucella can be used to make a diagnosis. In the absence of an acute phase serum specimen, a titer of at least one ratio, 160, in the convalescent phase serum sample is diagnostic. Treatment. The treatment of choice is tetracycline and doxycycline is the tetracycline. So we'll go for tetracycline plus tefampin. And there's no significant resistance to these drugs. Prevention. Prevention of brucellosis involves disease control, pasteurization of milk, immunization of animals, slaughtering of infected animals, and public awareness. And there is no human vaccine. All right, everybody, let's have a quick recap. The organism we discussed today is brucella. It is responsible for causing brucellosis with its other name, the undulant, Malta, or Mediterranean fever. And it enters human body by consumption of contaminated animal products like unpasteurized or raw milk, direct contact with infected animals. Hosts are humans because it causes brucellosis in human beings and animals because it is responsible for causing zoonotic infections. Animals include goats, sheep, cattle, and pigs. Diagnosis is based on gram staining, microscopy, and culture. And for treatment, doxycycline plus trifampin is used. And remember, doxycycline is a tetracycline. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any suggestions, feel free to leave them below in the comments. I'd be happy to read them. And I'll catch you in the next video. Till then, assalamu alaikum.